Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, today we are going to be talking about propaganda and how candidates get elected. All right, so we talked about these three things in the last video. First of all, we got to talk about the media's influence on an election. Um, so 98% of Americans have at least one television at their house, and I would say you know, pretty much everybody has a TV at their house. Um, I know I have two. Typically, I'll do an exercise in class where everybody raises their hand if they have at least one TV and keeps it up. Some people have as many as seven and eight televisions in their house. Um, so TV is a very, very viable form of uh, influencing the public. Uh, in the last few years, it's not so much uh, large networks, but it could be streaming services like Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, um, things like that. Uh, so that leads me to talk about more Americans using internet for news. I know personally I check ABC News every morning um, just because I like getting an unbiased opinion on the news. Um, some people still read newspapers. Typically those people are elderly. Uh, some people use magazines. Um, and there's a few magazines still in publication that are still really good, like Time Magazine is, is pretty good. Um, and then word of mouth is probably the most common uh, form of transfer of information. People say, hey, did you hear about this or did you hear about that? Um, and that's kind of getting a little dicey because it's like the telephone game when you say one thing uh, at one end and by the time it gets a couple people over, it's completely different. So. Word of mouth is not always reliable. Um, here's a picture of JFK versus uh, Richard Nixon in 1960 presidential election. Um, the reason that this is important is because up until this debate, Richard Nixon was winning in the election. He was leading in the polls. Um, after the election, the momentum shifted to John F. Kennedy, uh, who would eventually become the President of the United States in that election. This is a, a chart that charts how, um, how reliable news is and how hard it is to read. <clears throat> so basically, you know, you, to the left you have news that is um, very, very extremely biased towards uh, Democrats, and then to the other side you have news that is very, very, very biased towards Republicans. Um, they, there is not much on it. You will see these types of news uh, on things like Facebook or Instagram, Snapchat. It's not reliable news. It's not really good to read, okay? Um, and then you have things like CNN, USA Today, which report very, very basic news stories. In the last couple of years, CNN leans a little left, but not near as much as the president tries to make it out to be. Um, just because the president calls everything fake news does not mean it is fake news. Um, it is just news with a biased spin. Um, so I would say that CNN probably is closer to right here. It skews liberal, but still very reputable. Um, then you have other good news sources like Reuters and the AP, which is the Associated Press. The major networks like CBS, uh, ABC News, NBC, that if you see here, it meets high standards of journalism. Um, then you can get into analytical, uh, analytical news with minor partisan bias, uh, like the New York Times, the Washington Post, the BBC, uh, NPR, Christian Science Monitor, uh, PBS, all very, very good um, publications. You can read them fairly easily. Um, then you have the two major networks that skew one side or the other. You have MSNBC that skews most of the news towards being uh, Democratic. And then you have Fox News, which skews the news towards uh, Republicans. Um, moving up farther, you have very, very uh, complex news sources, the Wall Street Journal probably being the most um, reliable of those sources, but it's very good news and it's 
kind of hard to read for just the average reader. Um, I would definitely suggest consulting this chart before you read your news um, because these news sources, depending on what you read or what you watch, will put a spin and it can influence your decision. Um, up until the late 1970s, early 1980s, if a news station reported a story, they had to report on both sides, meaning they had to report what the Republicans and what the Democrats thought. Um, and that was ended in the 1980s, and that's when you see a, a rise of stations like Fox News and MSNBC. Um, that's where I'm going to stop this video, and I'm going to pick up with propaganda in the next video. I hope you all have a good day. Um, please let me know if you have any questions.